Okay, so just do an, another example. This continues from the first part. Um, little different. So now we want to um, estimate mu1 minus mu2 for two different populations. But again, we are making the assumption that the populations themselves, not just the estimators, but the populations are normal here. And also further, although we're not claiming to know or have an estimator, an estimate for the variance, we're going to do the case where the variances are the same. You can also do tests and find confidence intervals for when they're different, but um, we won't do that right at this point yet anyway. Okay, so, um, so let's just write that first of all. So I have these two populations, so let's write sigma squared is unknown. And, uh, but we will assume. Equal. Okay. Um, notice that, uh, yes. So this could be true, right? I could have two different populations and it could be reasonable to assume that the variances are roughly the same or the same but that the means might be different. And we want to estimate mu1 minus mu2. So our point estimator is still the same. X bar minus Y bar will estimate mu1 minus mu2. This is X bar minus Y bar is normal, of course. And we have that also it's it's unbiased, so e x bar minus y bar is mu one minus mu two, and variance x bar minus y bar is equal to sigma squared over m plus sigma squared over n. So taking the square root and factoring the sigma, I could write the standard error of x bar minus y bar is equal to sigma, and then just get that out of there, one over m over n. Okay, right. Okay, well, um, also since x bar minus y bar is normal, then we have z, for our t random variable, this is exactly the same as before so far is x bar minus y bar minus mu one minus mu two, and then divide by this sigma times one over m plus one over n, and this will be normal zero one from our assumptions. Also, what do we use for S squared? Well, um, we'll, sh we'll show that S squared, if we take the right thing, will still be independent of Z and will be still chi squared distributed. Um, so let's do that now. We'll call it SP squared for pooled. SP squared, the pooled sample variance should be computed this way. We should, um, we don't want to take the same mean and, and mix them all together. We are assuming they're different. So the variance of each population separately should be estimated this way. Um, I do want to collect all these error squared errors here. And then I want to divide by the total of, uh, freedom here, and I lose one freedom with each of these sums here. That should be clear, although I I don't know how clear actually. So if you want more of an explanation on that, we can do that. So we have that, and on the bottom, I want to have, um, I lose one each, so I have m plus n terms minus two. So this should be m plus n minus two. Um, you notice I could write this in terms of uh, the X uh, sample variance. So we could also say that um, 
Yeah, let's see. Do we need to do this at this point, though? Um, yeah, maybe not. So let's just write this note. If I take m plus n minus 2 times this sp squared and divide by the true variance, which I'm assuming is the same, then what do we get? We get the sum. Yeah, what do we get? We get this big sum, right? This cancels here. And I divide by sigma squared, which I can bring in each term here, right? So I have n plus m terms. I can bring that all in there. And I'm going to separate this. So 1 to m, xi minus x bar over sigma squared plus 1 to n, yi minus y bar over sigma Square. I was starting to write the two. That's a sigma down there. Okay. Okay. Now, what is this? This is chi squared with m minus one degrees of freedom. This is chi squared with n minus one degrees of freedom. Yeah, this is a little note. I mean, I, it should be sort of clear that if these are IID amongst each other, these are IID. Although it's not, uh, could be that they're not independent of each other. But in if you think of like all general kind of ways, maybe you'd be doing this kind of model. You're not going to think these are dependent on these, but these aren't. So we actually have all. If you want, if you want to write this, n plus m samples are are independent or okay the reason we i said this now is because when we come down here this means that this variable is independent of this variable and i just have two independent um random variables with the same um with the same uh rate or and so they're going to add and give me another chi squared where these degrees of freedom will add so this is chi squared with n plus or m plus n minus two okay so if i use this then and it's independent of z too Not Z, um, sorry, the, okay, let me calm down. Okay, that might be not as clear, but, but you'll have to accept this for now and maybe we could talk more about this. But again, it just comes from the um, all the samples being independent of each other and the result from theorem 7.3. All right. Um, okay, it doesn't, doesn't seem like a major obstacle. So we have our t random variable then. So, so t should be set equal to x bar minus y bar minus mu1 minus mu2 over sigma square root, one over m plus one over n, standard normal, and independent of this chi squared. So I can divide by the square root of this chi squared divided by its degrees of freedom. So this is just sp squared over sigma squared once I divide. The sigma squareds cancel again, the square root hits the sp and we get t equals x bar minus y bar minus mu one minus mu two all over sp square root one over m plus one over n which is T distributed with M plus N minus two degrees of freedom. And we have our 
pivotal quantity that we can use to find confidence intervals. So um, this implies then that uh, x bar minus y bar, that's our point estimator, plus or minus t alpha over 2, m plus n minus 2 times sp 1 over m plus 1 over n are the 1 minus alpha confidence limits for mu 1 minus mu 2, the difference in the population mean. OK, I just have a kind of quick, I think, um, Numerical examples, so suppose I have four numbers for X, very small sample, so I have 33.4, 31, 31, 31. And for Y, I have uh, 32.4, 30 30.8, 30.2, 29.7. And Really doesn't matter what these are, but I'll tell you what they are actually. So I looked up the top um, wing scores in the NBA and the top point guard scores in the NBA, and um, and this is the point guards here, and this are the wings here, and uh, these were the top four in each category. And I want to see if the point guards uh, tend to score have a higher mean for the number of points per game. Um, okay, so with these eight numbers, then we have n equals m equals four. They don't have to be equal. And we have, I did this on the computer, sp is equal to 1.187. Um, so this also gives me the square root of one fourth plus one fourth one half, so we know what this is, 0 0.707. And um, suppose we want a 90% CI this time. So if we want, we want a one minus alpha equals 0 0.9 uh, confidence interval for mu one minus mu two. So these are the point cards, and these are the wings. You don't need to know what this means at all. Okay, so um, alpha over two, I changed this, right? I made this a little bit less certain, and maybe I will narrow it a little. So we need, with one minus alpha equals 0. 0.9, this means alpha over two is 0. 0.05. So T alpha over two is equal to QT 0.95, right? The entire area to the left of the right tail. And um, in here I have M plus N minus two. So that's six degrees of freedom. I put this in and I get 1.943. This is for a 90% confidence interval. I actually, I think, I don't remember what the um, standard normal is for this. Um, I think it's going to be like 1.65, but I'm not, I don't want to say the wrong thing. But um, anyway, you can see again, this, this, is, this is certainly bigger. Um, we need to go farther out to get, get this much probability. Okay, so um, I'll take my X bar is, um, I don't remember, but X bar minus Y bar. X bar is bigger. It's pretty clear it's bigger, right? Because each one of these are bigger. X bar minus Y bar turns out to be 0 0.825. It is close. But again, I've only taken a few players. And I have my radius is T 0 0.05 times SP times square root one over M plus one over N. 
and this is equal to 1.943 times um, SP is 1.187 and 0 0.707. Now this is not very big, close to one. I get 1.63. So my um, my 90% confidence limits for the difference in points per game. Zero point eight two five plus and minus one point six three. Okay, let's say it in words again. So ninety percent. of intervals computed this way will contain mu1 minus mu2. OK, and let's just also write this like this, just so we can see what this looks like like this. This goes anywhere from negative 0.805 uh, up to positive 2.455. In other words, the difference between points per game of these two different types of players ranges from the, um, the wings being slightly higher than the point guards less than a point per game, but minus uh, 0.8 means the wings are about 0.8 of a point better or higher, up to the point guards are about two and a half points higher. And that's with about a 90% confidence interval, confidence based on um, only these eight samples. Okay, thanks.